We are now recording. And you got it on And your I am recording on my oh, laptop. All right. Take a nice big sip of water. Good to go. Spill it all over your keyboard and fry the computer. I was cleaning it up. Okay. All right. I'm ready to go. All right. Good to go. I don't have our video loaded, but I'm just going to yeah, Whatever. Well, folks, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. I've been teasing this since the top of the show, but uh, we're joined in studio right now by Jonathan Klinger from Haggerty Insurance. He's made the long drive all the way from Traverse City, Michigan, to our offices here in Livonian. For those of you that are not familiar with the geography of Michigan, Traverse City is at the very top, basically, of the lower peninsula of the Mitten, and you're coming down, basically, to Detroit, southeastern corner, so... Eight hours in a Model A Ford. Yep, eight hours, and uh, that equates to about 250 miles. Wow. Top speed of about, what, 50 miles an hour? Yeah, doing? yeah, give or take, but yeah. 50, yep. Yeah. So you guys, are, you're, you're doing this as part of a project. It's a year-long drive of a 1930 Ford Model A. Um, you're chronicling it on your blog, 365daysofa.com. Where did you come up with this project? What gave you the idea to do this? Because you, you, it's rare to see an old car on the road, let alone one that's driven in wintertime, you know? Well, you know, I've, I've always been into to old cars. And, you know, and I, I went to, that's what my background is. I went to school for automotive restoration. And, you know, just the more I go to shows and, and different, you know, industry events or tours or rallies or whatever, you know, all you see is... Uh, a lot of gray hair or no hair around. And, you know, it's just something I've had in the back of my head for a few years. I thought, you know, if I'm really serious about this, I just need to pick an old car and drive it for a year just to prove it can be done. Because, yeah. you know, people our age, you know, they wouldn't think of driving a car like that, you know, a couple hundred miles, let alone every day. You know, they think they're unreliable. Um, you can't work on them. They don't uh, have iPod connectors. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, or, you know, because of a lot of the publicity that, that uh, the high-end car auctions get on, on TV and in the news mm -hmm. these days, a lot of people think that uh, you have to be wealthy to have an old mm -hmm. car. And so that was kind of what... What's that, Michelle? <laughs> I was going to ask you, Jonathan, did you go to that restoration um, program in Kansas that Haggerty supports? I sure did, McPherson College, yep. Uh, it's the only program of its kind in the country, and it's supported by Haggerty. Yep, yep, and and as it, and many other people, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> and if if you ever find yourself driving through the middle of Kansas, Michelle, you should stop and check it out. I'd love to. <laughs> we almost went to Kansas last year. We were headed out. We, we took did. a big road trip last year out west. Okay. Well, you're again. certainly not in Kansas anymore. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is, whenever I talk about that, people will say, "Oh, Kansas, Kansas City." I said, no, 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 the, the, the middle of Kansas. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> What is it, the geographic center of the yeah, United exactly, States? Exactly, yeah. exactly. But, uh, um, you know, so basically the, the uh, you know, I, I made the mistake of talking about this crazy idea of mine. And, uh, you know, a few people at, at work basically called my bluff and said, you really think you could do that? And that's kind of what started this whole mm -hmm. project. I was, I, I, I talked about it and then I was challenged and then here we are 10 months, 10 months into it. You got to do it. So you picked... But you were daily driving it like two years ago when I met you, uh, weren't you? No, not this car. No, this is the, this is the first time I've done... A, I mean, I, I have old cars myself, and I, I've restored a 1919 Model T pickup, and I, I drive them quite a bit. But since last October, my modern vehicles, they haven't even been registered. They've been in storage, and this is my only vehicle with no exception for distance or weather. Uh, the only exception being is if I fly somewhere for, for business purposes, then obviously the rental car, because uh, Hertz hasn't come up with a 1930 <laughs> Model A for me just yet. Yeah. Maybe they will. they got a few <laughs> months to come up with that. But So you're dry. it's a 1930 Ford Model A. It's a two-door sedan. Correct. How did you? Where did you get the car, and why did you pick a Model A? Well, I picked the Model A for, for a number of reasons. Uh, they're inexpensive. You know, they're they're uh, they're still pretty popular. I mean, they made five million of them when they were new, and so there's a lot of them around. Mm -hmm. and, and because of that, there's a lot of companies that supply replacement parts for them and, and gaskets and whatever you might need. The stuff you need. Exactly. Like and plus, I also thought, okay, for this project, if I was in some you know '60s, you name it, that had that goes. 70 miles an hour and it has power steering and this and that it really wouldn't have been a challenge i mean i, I wanted a pre-war car and uh so i wanted a model a and i started searching and found this one on craigslist out from an elderly couple in indiana and uh 
I initially did not tell them what I was going to be doing with their car when I purchased it from them, but uh, they later found out, and they actually they were quite thrilled that oh, yeah. I've been. They they put 500 miles on it in 15 years, and I've put 12,000 miles on it in 10 months. <laughs> Little difference there. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about the driving experience. The car is basically stock. For yep. the mo- I mean, 90 percent plus stock. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I did a few modifications safety wise. Installed seat belts. Uh, put safety glass all the way around. Um, put a, an electric wiper motor versus yeah. uh, the original mechanical windshield wiper. And uh, but otherwise, it's largely stock. I mean, it's a stock 40 horsepower engine, three speed mm-hmm. non synchronized transmission, six volt electric system. And uh, it started at 10 below after sitting out all night. I mean, it, it's, uh, I wanted it to be as close to that 1930 experience as, as it could be. And, uh, and actually, with the way the roads are in part of this state, it is a very similar experience as what, than what it would have been driving around in 1930. Bomb cratered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're pretty rough down here in Detroit. <clears throat> so what, what's it like driving the car then? What, I mean, you mentioned an unsynchronized transmission. Explain that for our audience, some people that may not know what that means. Um, in, in simple terms, um, you, basic, you have to double clutch when you're shifting, and uh, basically so you can match the, the RPMs of the engine to the, to the speed that the transmission's spinning at. And uh, so it just a little extra added, added step uh, gives the car a little more character. Um, but uh, as far as my daily driving and my daily lifestyle, I have a 14-mile commute to the office. Um, it's, it's a windy rural road mm-hmm. for about 10 miles of that commute, and, and the, the highest speed limit is 45. Mm-hmm. So the car easily goes 45 miles an hour. And, and so it's not like I have to leave 20 minutes extra to get to work on time or anything like that. Um, but when I do drive it out of town, that's a little bit different story because it comfortably cruises at about 50 miles an hour. And uh, I... My hometown is in northern Illinois, outside of Rockford, and I've driven it there twice. And just to put it in comparison, in a modern-day vehicle, it takes between six and eight hours, depending on how you hit Chicago, and mm-hmm. it took me 14 in the Model A. So just all back roads, back country roads, no interstate. And uh, um, while that may sound daunting, you know, a 14-hour road trip that should normally take, you know, half that, is, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot more interesting, I think, and I would argue this, it's a lot more interesting taking a road trip when you're off of the interstate. Mm-hmm. You know, because you, you never know what you're going to come across. You know, if you think about why most people dislike road trips, you know, think of the interstate. Every exit looks the same, same gas station, same fast food restaurant, mm-hmm. same chain hotels, and it's just kind of never ending. And it's, when are, are we there yet? Are we there yet? But, you know, when you're on the side roads, yeah, it takes longer, but uh, you never know what you're going to see. Yeah. Talk about the, the, the actual experience driving the car. You've got mechanical brakes, no power steering. Correct. Yeah, the list goes on. No power amenities whatsoever that that we're used to, and even the most basic of of, of modern cars. Um, so you kind of have to rethink how you drive or, or or change your driving habits because for the, um, you know, the first thing is, is like you said, it has mechanical brakes. Um, and while I feel safe in it, you have to give yourself more room to stop. Mm-hmm. And therefore, you just, and you don't even have to think about it, but once you kind of learn the limitations of the vehicle, you know, you don't tailgate people. You don't wait till the last second to slam on the brakes when you're coming up to an intersection. Like we did on the trip back here. <laughs> so I failed to give you adequate directions. <laughs> See, they can't stop. You, you, exactly. You, you, uh, you did uh, experience... Did. That it, they can't stop. It did make the turn, though. I was very impressed. Yes. Um, I thought we were going to have to go around the block. <laughs> but, uh, you know, even if you don't have as great a braking power, if you have that, what I can't remember what they taught you in, in driver's ed, what, 10 seconds mm-hmm. between you and the car ahead of you? If something happens ahead of you, you've got time to react. And also something else that kind of dawned on me about, I'd say, six months into it, you know, back to this windy road I, I told you that's on my daily commute. You know, prior to this, you know, if I got behind a car that was, heaven forbid, going the speed limit or a few miles an hour uh-huh. slower, I just couldn't wait until I could get around them and pass them. And with it being a windy road, you had to wait for the right mm-hmm. right uh, spot. And But there's three stoplights I would encounter before I would get to the end of this road. And about half the time, all those cars that I passed at some point would end up right behind me again. So then here I'm feeling like the idiot that that passed everybody, and yet we've arrived at the same time. Well, now in the Model A, I'm the one getting passed. 
on a regular basis. I did pass somebody once on that road, and I did feel really good about it. But, were they uh, broken down <laughs> off to the side? <laughs> no, they no? were a tourist. They were going way too slow. Okay. But, uh, um, but guess what? I bet you 90% of the time I end up right behind those same vehicles that pass me once we get into town. And so... You know, it's kind of taught me something. It's like, okay, maybe being in a hurry doesn't really get you there that much quicker. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So you've got been... To, well, I'm sorry. I got, a, I got a question for you. As you talked about starting the car in, in 10 below, is what is a car, what is it actually like to drive when it's that cold? I'm assuming there's not much, if any, of the heating system in the car. Well, you know, correct, you know, as they rolled off the factory, they did not have a heater. A heater was not available. But there were several kits available that would install an exhaust manifold heater. And before winter, you know, came along, you know, several old timers. This is why that's not even a melt the snow on the off the floorboards. And and uh, so good, I good had as a Volkswagen Beetle heater, in other words. Basically, that's what everybody said. And so, like when I was just driving around town or you know to and from work, it it. it was barely effective at best. You know, I, I got used to bundling up with a hat and gloves. Didn't have and, time and to get warmed up. Exactly. Really. When it, And when it was really cold, I actually had an insulated coverall, you know, that I would wear. Um, but interestingly enough, when I got on the open road, if I was driving at, you know, that 45, 50 mile an hour for better than an hour, I would end up having to crack open the windows because it was so warm inside. So on longer trips, it worked well. But around town, it did not. I, I get used to having cold feet. Mm-hmm. How how did it drive in the winter? Was there a big difference versus the summer? Because it seems like it would be pretty treacherous rear wheel drive, and everything. You would think brakes. so. Rear wheel drive. Yep. Uh, you know, no, no anti lag brakes or stability control or all the stuff that we're spoiled with today. Narrow tires would help, though, wouldn't it? it absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's what I was getting at. Yep. The narrow tires are an advantage, and if you look at a car like that, it has plenty of ground clearance because of the roads of the day. Um, the first significant snow we had in Traverse City last fall, I passed three Subarus in the ditch on my way to work. Are you kidding me? And, and I'm not out there, all you Subaru lovers, I'm not out there trying to say that a Model A handles better in the snow, but, you know, what, what I did kind of learn, though, is, you know, I'm already going a little bit slower and a little more cautious yeah. in this car to begin with, and a lot of people, they think, oh, I've got all-wheel drive and snow tires, I'm invincible, and, you know, ice <laughs> is ice. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what you're driving, and, and so it... It actually, I never had a single issue. I, I never went in a ditch. I was, I was never stuck. Wow. And because uh, northern it, Michigan, it, it does snow it, it, on yep, occasion. Yeah, we do get snow <laughs> once in a while. Yeah. And, uh, um, right. and and while I haven't published this video, it actually is quite hard to get it into a, a donut situation too. But uh, we did <laughs> test that out in a parking lot one night. <laughs> Not quite <laughs> enough one, power. <laughs> one one thing I learned from living in the UP for a couple winters and driving a five liter Mustang through a UP winter is <laughs> just be smart on how you drive. And it's amazing how, you know, how far you can go and how not difficult it is. Mm-hmm. And when you drive like a moron in any vehicle, you're going to end up on your roof. Exactly. Yep. Definitely. Exactly. I yeah. mean, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just, I mean, there were lots of people that had rear wheel drive vehicles, you know, for, for decades before all these all wheel drive, stability control, whatever. And uh, people got around just fine. Yeah, definitely. Now, Michigan, we do, do put salt on the roads in the wintertime. Has that been a problem for you? I know these. Well, that was car. probably my biggest hang up in doing this project was the fact that whatever car I got, you know, was going to be subjected to the salt and the snow. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, anyone that cares anything about cars, that's going to make you cringe when you say that. And so I kept that in mind when I found this car. I, I did not want. I certainly did not want an all-original unrestored car, and I did not want a freshly restored car. Mm-hmm. Um, so this one, if you look closely, it you know it looks great from 20 feet away. When you get up close, there's some filler in the body, and and uh, it's just kind of it's been sprayed a few times in its life, and and uh, so it's a car that while it looks great and it's in, in excellent mechanical shape, you know it isn't perfect, and so it was. I, I hate to I hate to use the word sacrificial, but I was not afraid to drive this car in the yeah. winter. Well, that's great because you don't see old vehicles out on the road. People no. restore them and then just park them, and it's a shame. It's almost such. Why'd you waste your time and money doing that? Well, and, show it. And, and I was prepared for negative feedback from people mm-hmm. seeing it out in the snow and in the salty roads. And only one time did one person question me at a gas station about that. And every every other person that I ever encountered, they're like, "It's so neat to see this car out in the snow." And and you know, if, and, and if you go back to the blog site, there's several photos of it in the snow. I think it looks good in the snow, actually. 
And it, it was just a lot of fun. I mean, it was kind of a, a sense of accomplishment, you know, making it through a snow-drifted road. And, and uh, it, was, it was just, I don't know, it, it brought the enjoyment back into driving. Yeah. For me, anyways. It looks good on the road, just in the rearview mirror. We went out to shoot some video of it before we sat down here, and it's pretty distinctive seeing this big, tall, like horse collar type grill. Mm -hmm. and, and the other fun thing is, is uh, you know, I'm a sucker for for uh, people telling stories. You know, old timers telling stories of when they were younger and the cars they had, and and driving around in a car like this, it, it just it sparks that story from someone. I mean, it, a complete stranger comes up to you and, and just tells you some of the most fascinating stories you've ever heard. Yeah, that was something else I was going to ask. You know, how often do people stop you? I mean, do you cause traffic jams out <laughs> well, on the road? Or? Well, you know what's interesting is people honk at me all the time. And, you know, and you never get used to that because you, you, your instinct is if someone's honking at you, you've done something wrong or they're upset with you or whatever. And, you know, you turn and look and they're smiling and waving. And, and uh, oh, yeah, there's there's people that have, have passed me and in times that they shouldn't have been passing anybody and they've got their cell phone hung out the window trying to take a photo uh -huh. of it. And, and uh, no, it, it, people just love seeing old cars on the road. And, you know, and there's nothing special or significant about a Model A Ford. I mean, there's a lot of them out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's certainly far more valuable cars out there on the road. People just like seeing interesting and old cars. It's not another Camry. Exactly. Yeah. Well, DC Auto Geek in the chat asks, what's the MPG on the Model A? That's a good question. You know, they, when they were sold new, they were advertised to have a top speed of 65 miles an hour and achieve 25 miles to the gallon. I can barely, barely prove the 65 mile an hour top speed, but I have yet to prove the 25 miles to the gallon. It's, uh, um, you know, on a good tank i can get 18 but mm -hmm. it's usually it's more like 16 and at the height of the winter you know when i was letting it warm up and stuff you know it was as low as 14 so you know 16 average any idea how bad the your co2 emissions are out of your tail um i don't want to know <laughs> <laughs> it actually would be interesting to find out to take it to a uh... i heard the hole in the ozone layer follows you there you go <laughs> uh jonathan brown's asking uh, is there a heater in your car uh, I had, I took it out, um, I had an exhaust manifold heater. It was, a, it was a kit that was available when they were new, and uh, it worked quite well. But it's either on or not installed. So mm. <laughs> once springtime came around, I took it out and put the stock exhaust manifold in it. Yeah, yeah. So any, any other interesting stories from the road? I know you mentioned a lot of old-timers will stop you, chat. Well, you know what the neat thing about driving a, an old car is if you do encounter some type of issue you know mechanical issue or whatever unless it's a catastrophic failure you know just a little bit of creativity and ingenuity goes a long ways um, early on this is still back in October I was uh, heading into work and I was backing it out of my garage and it was um, you know I had just fired it up backing it out haven't had a chance for the engine to warm up and it, it just kind of coughed and backfired and quit uh -huh. you know no big deal went to fire it back up started up right away but all of a sudden it had a massive vacuum leak and I thought oh geez I've bro blown the intake manifold gasket that was my first uh -huh. thought and so I opened the hood well that was fine but it had and this was from the previous order it had an accessory wolf whistle which has no practical purpose, no. but, you know, Being it's obnoxious. good for parades and whatever. You know, people like to put them on there. And the pressure from when it backfired, it actually blew that whistle off its mountain. So I had a, you know, about a half inch, actually probably three quarters of an inch size diameter hole in the man, in the, in the uh, intake manifold that uh, was obviously causing a massive vacuum leak. And, yeah. and I didn't have much time, and I walked into the, backed into my house and on the counter was a a wine cork from from the night before and i grabbed that wine cork and a pocket knife and i whittled it down and shoved it in the hole and and i drove it like that for a couple of weeks until i finally properly fixed it wow. and the, the 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 ending part of the story is a few years prior to that my my daily driver i was stranded on the side of the road the crankshaft positioning sensor had gone bad and there's not a thing in the world you can do to fix that when that's gone bad and I would have been much better off with the bottle of wine itself than, than that cork and the, <laughs> the pocket knife <laughs> while so I was waiting I, for I was the tow truck. I going to you if you had any Tom Joad beside the road kind of moments, but that's close enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that's been it. But, uh, so we got a couple more questions in the chat room. Sean in Erie wants to know, <clears throat> does, does Haggerty say anything about driving the car every day to and from work? They're kind of sponsored. You know, that's a good question. I, I work for Haggerty, and if anybody's um, 
understands how a collector car insurance policy works. They're not for daily drivers. You know, we don't limit the miles or tell you how you can use it. It's just you have to have a daily driver in addition to your old car. And I am playing by the rules. Believe it or not, this car is not insured by Haggerty. It is on a standard, you know, auto policy, and, and my other old cars are on the Haggerty policy. So to answer that question, it um, I am playing by the rules. But, you know, that being said, there's no mileage limitations on a policy. Okay. And also, uh, DC Auto Geek is asking, what do you plan to do after your 365 days? Are you going to go back to your 99 Explorer, or are you going <laughs> to stick with the Model A? You know, that's a, that's a good question. And now that it's getting closer, I, I've been thinking about it more because it, it's been fun, and, and I don't find it as a hardship. And I honestly, I had more fun driving it in the wintertime. It, just, it was a hoot driving that thing in the snow. Um, I don't think I'm going to drive it through another winter just for the salt factor. That That's really the only reason if if michigan could, michigan could kick its salt addiction i would just i would just keep driving it every day so i mean that car is not going to become a forgotten trailer queen by any stretch of the imagination but uh, i will be in modern this winter oh, very nice how reliable has it been um it, it's been you know that that's kind of a loaded question because if you compare it to a modern car that has a hundred thousand mile tune-up interval mm -hmm. you know person someone's going to say it's it's not reliable but I've, I've been stranded twice with two separate occasions with electrical issues. And had I just rewired the car and got rid of the 81-year-old wiring to begin with, I would have prevented that. But uh, otherwise, it's been fine. You know, the issues, I mean, there's been a, two different times I came out and it wouldn't start. And it was an issue with the points. And mm -hmm. I had an extra set of points with me. And I swapped them in. And five minutes later, it was running. You know, so you have to be prepared for stuff like that. But as far as I, I have had to have it hauled back to my house two different times because of electrical issues. Mm -hmm. You let but, the smoke out of the wires, as you said. Uh, well, yes, the smoke <laughs> escaped from the wires. Yeah, <laughs> Fortunately, before there was flames. Yeah, uh, A couple more questions in the chat room about the insurance. It, one guy's asking, is it expensive to insure a Model A as a regular car? No, it's not. Um, I mean, you know, I think there'd be a lot of things that would go into each person's situation, just like it is with insurance, but it's Oh, what was it? It was oh around seven hundred dollars for the year. Oh, yeah. Well, so it, it's comparable to your average, you know, used car. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm curious what that would be like in the Metro Detroit area, especially. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's true. In Traverse City, is probably a little different. You know, and, and, and as far as anyone listening, if you wanted to, if that wasn't your true daily driver, which would be the case for ninety eight percent of the people, that would be like two hundred dollars to insure. You know, if it was through any one of the collector car insurance yeah. companies. Jonathan Brown asks, uh, do you park it outside at night, or is this in the garage? It is in the garage at night, unless I'm traveling with it. You know, like this weekend, it's going to be sitting out at the hotel. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, it is in, in my garage at night. Yeah. One other thing I, I wanted to ask you about, safety. <laughs> if you get in an accident, you're done. Well, or, you added the, the safety well, I, glasses. Well, I don't want to say done, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's a little pessimistic. It, it, I'm sorry. It... it, it uh, um, yeah, it certainly isn't going to pass any 2011, you know, crash test safety standards. But, you know, that being said, it's, you know, it, it'd be like if you're riding a motorcycle every day or whatever. There, there is a risk that goes into it. And, and to, to lessen that, I did install seatbelts. Um, I did install the safety glass because it did not have safety glass in it when I purchased it. Mm -hmm. um, and you just have to be aware of it. And I, and I will argue, and, and people will probably argue this against me, but... I firmly believe that people driving older cars are safer drivers out on the road. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say that car is safer, but I'm saying the that... The situational awareness. Yes, your driving. situational awareness. It makes you a more alert, more cautious driver. You don't tailgate people. You aren't slamming on the brakes at the last second. Mm -hmm. and, and because of that, it gives you more time to react to bad situations. Now, that being said, if I got team bowed by an 18-wheeler, it, it, you know, I, I would not be on the winning end of that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you wouldn't be in a lot of small cars anyways. Yeah. But, Did your uh, wife take an extra half million dollars of insurance on <laughs> <laughs> Well, there, there, there's, there's no wife in this equation. But, no. <laughs> yeah, that, that would have been that would have been a wise move. Yeah. So how much longer do you have till your year is up? The middle of October. Middle so of October. we're, what is that, 70-some days, I guess, if you did the math. Mm -hmm. And you're winding down. Celebrated the wine crush up in tra Traverse City. <laughs> well, actually, I'm uh, ending this project, but I'm going to drive it out to Hershey, Pennsylvania for oh, cool. the annual Hershey swap meet. So 
which believe it or not, I you know I've been to you know many great events you know around the country. I've never been to Hershey, so my buddy that, and his dad go every year. That was uh, that's one thing I've always wanted to get to, and this is a project I've always wanted to do. So, yeah. and believe and it'll be my thirtieth birthday the day that I'm driving out there. So <laughs> we're just awesome. going to be celebrating a bunch of things at once for the thirtieth birthday, 1930 model. A. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wrapping up your 365 days of a. This yep. is a great story. I'm so glad you came on the show. Talk to us, Jonathan. Well, thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for making the drive all the way down here just for us. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So for more of Jonathan's year-long adventure, you can visit his website, 365daysofa.com. And you can also swing by our website, roundaboutshow.com. We've got a little video we shot earlier of Jonathan and his amazing ride. So... Am I going to get to drive this thing now? Sure. Let's go for a spin. Sweet. Good. Mark it. Mark it. Good job. Beautiful. I even got some of the video in there. I see it. That's awesome. Oh, that's I shall impressive. return. It's not black, Craigie. I never said it was. Yes, you did. <laughs> it's blue. You said black. Oh, oh, be careful. I don't think I did. You did. <laughs> Mm-mm. You nope. did? Nope. You did? Dark blue. All right, you guys take it around the building. Right. I'm going right. to get set for the, okay. the open and of the podcast. Can somebody do the uh, intros? I think so. If haven't been done yet, I didn't see them. So. So, so there's quite a hierarchy of microphones here. You have this very fancy, <laughs> insulated, rubber mounted. Yep. And then, you know, Ben has this average looking one, and then there's this cardboard <laughs> thing <laughs> with a phone clip to it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this one has a longer range. Okay. So, um, guests that are on, and oh, yeah. no, they're going to sit further away. <laughs> no, this one, one you have to, like, time. kiss the whole time. Space and this one. one's not quite as bad, but still pretty bad. And that one, you just... All right. no, I love creativity. Remember wine corks and pocket knives. Right. This, we actually set this cardboard crap up. We were doing a live... We There's a thing called a live view backpack, and it's basically uh -huh. a bunch of air cards, uh -huh. and you can broadcast live webcasts from anywhere because mm -hmm. it uses the cell towers. And we were testing it for auto line, so we did a roundabout from inside a vehicle as we were driving. So we had to figure a way to mount this microphone in, in a glass in the cup holder, and this was the contraption that I came up with. <laughs> there you and go. we had to have, Ben had a little Bluetooth speaker uh -huh. that we needed to feed in there for audio for some reason, so we had to figure a way of mounting that on there. So that was my <laughs> handicraft before cool. the show. So, All right, All right Ben, you're, you're set to go. Yeah, I'm going to get minute. set, and then we will... Okay. We'll be making the show. Look me up. I'll Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah. Craig right. <laughs> has a man crush. Isn't that funny that I know him? It is funny. I didn't ha, know him. Ha, there. ha, ha, hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna eat my salt and vinegar chips right now. Is it okay to make uh, light of the Japanese earthquake now? Has it been enough time? <laughs> I need to uh, know the answer. Depends <laughs> how light. <laughs> <laughs> well, read my thing with the, the CRV being crashed. It just said, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. I gotta find it. This is the first sentence. Lola said hi, by the way. Hi, Lola. Yeah, I saw. Japan is hit. That's oh, okay, that's man. fine. I think that's fine. That's, yeah, no. Um, no one did the darts prom, Bron. It's for you. <laughs> for me? No. Get so many, like, spam marketer people trying to hit me to Google Plus. They're ruining us already. I don't know who this people is. Michelle, yep. you're not on there. You don't you don't do anything on there. Michelle. What am I supposed What? <laughs> you don't do anything on the you, you don't do anything on the Google Plus. I know. You have social media Maven. I'm just getting a running start. I'm trying to get this <laughs> camera to work better. I'll get around to it eventually. This camera's accentuating my jowl too much. You only put this in one place. It's a 
future, Michelle. You can't be left behind. Oh, you can't see me. Hey, does someone want to organize the stories for me? And do like, so none of you guys are reading stories back to back? That'd be helpful. <laughs> no volunteers then. Good. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. <laughs> no one else seems to care. <laughs> I gotta find my sound effects. Sorry, Sorry I'm getting them, texts from people I don't know. Most of them aren't back to. Oh, okay, Craig. Okay, here it goes. Craig is back to back here. So I'll move this one up here. Is that a Blackberry you have there, Eric? Unfortunately. I can tell by the tapping. Terrible tapping. Just waiting, waiting for uh, for the day in mid September. I'm gonna get a Droid Bionic, I think, when it comes out. That's one great thing about having uh, Verizon when you visit basically any country, I guess, except Israel and Japan. You know, it'll, you'll never be roaming because they you want to have service. <laughs> yeah, they don't. The rest <laughs> they don't of see do me. Yeah, exactly. I was reading too recently that you know the change the LTE that that should fix the problem but it won't because Verizon's on one part of the 700 megahertz spectrum and AT&T and the rest of the GSM uh, legacy carriers are on the other part of the 700 megahertz of course, of course yeah. whoa mm. <laughs> those salt and vinegar dessert. chips are good they're right good I could taste them all that crunching Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crunch all you want, we'll make more. <laughs> oh, when I when 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 I get my next phone, I have yet to decide whether I'm going to send my phone, my current phone, to Gazelle, or whether I'm going to use it as a target for my 45. <laughs> <coughs> That's how I felt about that Asus tablet PC I got. That was the stupidest purchase I've ever made. Hey, I heard those were supposed to be good, the one that's 299 or whatever. No, I'm talking about one like that came oh, out before, before the iPad before even. Before the marketplace. It was awful. Oh my god. Nice turtle. Yeah, this, I can't seem to keep my head in the image, so. <laughs> a Native American person in Panama <coughs> made that for me. $2. You got a Kindle, huh? And the Kindle. Is that a, is that a Kindle, Eric? Uh, yep. Is it the ad supported one? Yeah. It only it only shows it like when you're starving up and stuff like that, so I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, and then I bought the official case or the official um, cover for it because it turns on. It has a light. Oh, nice. You definitely need that. Like yeah. I I got so frustrated with my Kindle because I never had enough light in my apartment to read it. No, it works good. It's an LED light. It, it has plenty of lights. I I almost wish I had, I mean the Kindle too is great, but I wish I had waited till, you know, like the generation you got because the contrast is so much better. It you know mm -hmm. mine there just isn't. It's not like black on white, and I'm sure yours isn't exactly like that either. But a lot closer than. Mine. It's good. It, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Those are cool, Colin. <laughs> Thanks. Where'd you get them? Um, Pan I went to Panama for a week. Just got back. Oh wow! I went there to go. They have the they have the most bird species in the world, apparently. And so I had to go speak with my bird brethren. <laughs> Do they have cars? Oh yeah, I put I put some up on uh, Google Plus. Some of the cars. Um, they. The birds what I love have about cars? the birds have cars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what I love about countries like that is that since they don't, you know, they don't make cars, they don't, you know, they just import them. They don't seem to care about what anyone's environmental or whatever policies <laughs> are, safety regulations. So they just have everything. It's like it's just, you know, and so you'll see like uh, one that will be a specific brand in one country, and you know, then I'll, uh, I can't think of the right the car right now. You know, like this. The Chevy stuff, whatever, you know what I mean? They have, like, the same cars over and over again, and then the Opal versions of those cars will be there. It's pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, they drive... They, the most popular car there is the Accent, which is interesting. Six. 
I saw a three wheeled car there. British. Is that British? The Reliant Robin? Yeah, oh, the Reliant, yeah. Yeah, I saw two of those, uh, actually. And then they really like the Suzuki APV. And um, I'm trying to think of the other thing they really like. They like this thing called the Toyota Front Turner, I think. I don't think we get it here. It's like the, it's based off the Hilux truck. I guess mm -hmm. it's kind of like the Forerunner. The government loves using it there. It's a great place. Is it over Americanized? No, that's well. I mean, they have like McDonald's and stuff, but all, all the Americans left apparently when they uh, when when they were done with the canal in 1999. It's like no one speaks uh, English there. I, I thought there were gonna be more English speakers there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they have like a beautiful uh, cityscape. It's just really amazing. I think a lot of people don't realize that how <clears throat> how modern it looks. Um, Kind of looks like Chicago, actually, parts of it. But they have terrible infrastructure. That's the most hilarious part. It's like comically bad. Uh, like their their main thoroughway or whatever is like as big as the street that I live on, my one way street. So it's like traffic will will pick up and you know just pure gridlock. It reminds me of Mexico in that respect. Um, they're building this new Trump Tower there. It's like a 80 story building and I guess a sewage system there. They didn't really contemplate what that what the impact of an 80 story building would do to it so it like erupted and all the sewage and everything went into the Trump Tower it's pretty awesome <laughs> <laughs> come on Craig come on phone ask phone ask hotel do you think these uh, have you guys seen these solar panel charging stations yet anywhere um, I just saw the story that sure. there's one in there's one in Michigan, but it's up in Grand Blanc or something, which is about an hour and a half north of Detroit. It's kind of more by Flint. And then where was the other one? What? I was, I'm looking at one on G Plus for near um, uh, Nissan's headquarters. Where is that in Canton, Tennessee, or something? That, yeah, it's towards Nashville. I mean, I know Chevy's doing it because they just. As part of their seven and a half billion dollar investment in you something, ready to go, Craig? I'm ready. some company, they're doing uh, solar power powered charging stations at their dealerships. Um, where's that story? Because I had to post it today for one of our clients. Colin, there's a one of the Mitsubishi headquarters array that charges like six cars uh, on order, the Autobytel Facebook page here. that I took so a couple oh, yeah. of weeks ago. Oh, Eric Michelle, Craig, Colin, Eric. Colin, did you reorder the stories after all or no? No, I did. Yeah, I did. I made, oh, you or, reordered them too? Okay. Well, let's see. It goes Eric, Michelle, Craig, Colin, Eric, Craig, Michelle, Colin, Eric, Craig, whatever. It's close enough. Michelle, yeah, Colin. Colin. That's fine. As long as it's not Eric, 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 Michelle, right. Colin, Colin, Colin. Yeah, I just told him so. It's Col Colin in the, uh, in the tiny chat chat, because that's the only one I'm signing into at the moment. Oh. I put a link for a, a story about, it was an autoblog green about the Chevy dealership stuff. All right, oh. folks, are we ready? Benjamin, are you recording on the Ustream? Yep, continue to record. Let me just pull up these links real quick. And then, yes. Chat room, are you ready? How'd you like that interview? Good, bad, awesome, maybe? You're welcome. <laughs> well, that was my idea. <coughs> at me with disdain. Pretty much genius, I guess. Something. Gorski says, good. good. <laughs> Nearly passable. <laughs> Adequate. Good. At best. Bueno. I er didn't die watching it. So. <laughs> DC Auto Geek says, better than listening to Rayla Hood Oogle Obama. Jonathan Brown liked it. He said it was awesome. Quote. Awesome. Well, thank you, Miradart. He enjoyed it as well. And Rumblestrip seems to have liked it. He's posting a link in the chat. <laughs> Spammer. <laughs> you saw a Rumblestrip. I don't write for. <laughs> Are you almost ready? Yeah. Have you guys flown American 
recently. No, I avoid them. Yeah, that's like, like the they first. lost my luggage. This is the third time I've done it. And also, it's just like their planes. I mean, their planes are so old at this point. They're it's, they're it's, disgusting inside too. Yeah, they're all just, what thirty year old DC eighties or whatever. Well, or, that's yeah. what I was in. A, I was in a seven fifty seven. So I mean, oh. I guess it's not that old, but I mean, still using the <coughs> cathode ray O twos or whatever. Yep. That's no good. Also, the horrible uh, uh, what do they call it? Hydraulic uh, noises and everything in it just. MVH wise is horrible. The worst is I hate the DC9 slash MD80 slash 717. <laughs> they still have the, the, those are McDouglas, right? Or something those like are that. McDonnell Douglas. But <laughs> yeah. the worst seat, they're, they're noisy even if you're in first class. They're really noisy. But you get stuck next to the engine at the back where you don't even have a window. You just have the intake <laughs> of the turbo fan right here. Well, I mean, supposedly American's supposed to be. They have the most orders, you know, to redo their whole um, fleet, but I don't know when they're ever going to get these planes. Well, this, they're never going to get the 787, that's for sure, because it's never going to be done. <laughs> yeah, let me look again. Let me move it. Was the 787 that they it's ordered? like seven get. times or something. It's absurd. Yeah. That's because they outsourced everything. Yep. All right, let's get going, guys. Right. Uh, one thing I was going to say, Craig, for your Jimmy Stewart one, I was going to do... I saw you put a sound drop in there. Oh, yeah, I forgot to grab that. That's not what I was even going to say, but I'm glad. That... Speaking of sound drop, Ben, did you look at that app I sent you the link for I or anymore? I, no, I didn't get to try it yet. Just curious. Yeah, I, I thought about <laughs> every, every Friday comes around and I go, maybe I should grab my iPad today and I could actually try that. That, <laughs> that usually doesn't end up happening. Do, do, do. In fact, never has. Train honkulating at us. It's the advantage of living on the other side of the tracks. What's the, uh, what's the Boeing where the engines at the top and in the tail uh, thingamajig? That was a 727. Had tr triple engines. Oh, uh, there's never one that just has an engine all the way in the back and not on the wings. Is that am I making that up? Say again. Is there did it, Boeing didn't make up one where they just had a single engine and it was in the back? Uh, no. No. Okay, yeah, I guess that seemed kind of crazy. Well, there was a DC-10. They had one engine on the back and then two under the wings, one on each side. Boeing had one, Boeing had one as well, and it was like an early 727 or something like that. 727. Yeah, those ones scare me. I like the DC-10s. They actually had room in them. Yeah. Well, okay, hang on. I'm going to pull up this sound. Hey, okay, what's the matter, lady? Your arm broken? All right, that's Ben found this, not me. It is Jimmy Stewart themed. I apologize in advance. There goes Mr. Speed King himself. And is that a piece of sushi we're looking at for Mr. Bird? That's his turtle. Tur yeah, it, it's oh. turtle sushi. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't get my face in there for long enough, so I figured this throw a handcraft avatar up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, but what I was going to say is I was going to do a, since it's, I was going to do like an express version of roundabout rear view where I just played it like double speed. Oh, okay. If you, if you wanted. I thought that might be funny. Mm -hmm. And now and now we have a very quick version of roundabout rear view. Or, you want know, me to say that? Something like that, yeah, and I can, let me just test it. When I'm going on rain in my old old I think of all our picnics, those rolls are flopping. It's the dance version. I wouldn't do it, I don't Stupid. know. Stupid, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Apparently the uh, 727 was so noisy they had to be taken out of production. All right, I'm ready then. All righty. Are you recording? I am. I never stopped. I never oh. stopped. Never stopped. Oh, never all stopped. those things we Blood. said. I know. All those things. <laughs> and, and other... So all naughty. those chips I ate. Yeah, I know. All right. Are we Salt ready, Salt vinegar. <laughs> Colin, you're guffawing with readiness. Oh, yeah. Eric is stoic as always. Michelle, are you prepared? What? Where? Let's, let's go then. Ben, you ready? You're recording on Ustream. Never stop. I'm ready. And I'll remind the chat room to keep an ear out for good title ideas. Yes. And yes. Uh, I'll remind <laughs> our panel that we can hear you when you type, so just type a little bit softer. Michelle. This flight's ready. Right in the, uh, this Okay, there it is. Michelle is bowing, Ben. <laughs> 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 All right. 
So you ready? I'm ready. All right. Coming up on Roundabout, does the world need another crossover? Find out which automaker is rumored to be basing one off of a B-segment car. Dearly departed actor Jimmy Stewart teaches, teaches driver's ed, and we interview a very special guest later on in the show, a man who's spending an entire year driving a vintage car as his only form of transportation. So take a seat, get yourself comfortable, and enjoy all of this wholesome goodness only on Roundabout. Roundabout is sponsored by Advance Auto Parts. Visit our website, roundaboutshow.com, to get up to $30 off your next purchase. And by Tire Rack. Follow the link on our website to save up to $80. All up to $80. <laughs> Colin. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad it's people pay attention when I'm talking. <laughs> It wasn't my fault this time. <laughs> but, but I will say in advance, Michelle, you're saying this is roundabout. Just I noticed okay. that, too. <laughs> All right. All right, everyone quiet. In Chicago, pew, pew, I'm Colin Bird from Cars.com. In SoCal Heaven, I'm Michelle Naranjo from Autobytel.com. In Little Baghdad, I'm Eric Tritko from RumbleStrip.net. In the roundabout studios, I'm your host, Craig Cole. And I am producer, reluctantly. Ben Sanders. This is Roundabout. Hello and welcome to Roundabout, episode number 91. It's our weekly chat covering car culture, vehicle reviews, and some of the auto news you may have missed. Welcome back, everyone, and to our live audience. We thank you for joining us a little bit later than usual. Uh, we had some issues today, not the least of which was a complete internet failure, so... Boop, 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 boop. Exactly. We're lucky to be broadcasting, webcasting live right now with the whole gang. They're all here, Michelle Narano, Colin Bird, and of course, Eric the Tritko. So if you stick around for the second half of the show, we're going to have a very special interview with a very special gentleman that drove all the way down from northern Michigan to be here. Guys, Don't Craig has... He has a man crush, I'm afraid. I don't. I wouldn't go that far, Ben. Mm, mm. I, I've seen you around him. Mm. Yeah, called... we, we heard you and Christian Conover, though, too, Ben, so don't, oh. yes. you know. Oh, <laughs> that wasn't on the show. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Burn. Wow. Yeah, Ben was writing letters. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Whoa, someone's got a call. Yeah, I got a text. Sorry. With a Q. Mr. Businessman over there. <laughs> What's up? Man, got the shipment. Well, he's got the first story, so may as well just burn some time here, right? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not. It wasn't us. I mean, it's not us saying. That we do have was. a couple suggestions from the chat room for titles already. The one with the guy oh. with the Model A, oh. courtesy of Wolfski. <laughs> <laughs> Sean and Erie. The world does not need another crossover. Yeah. Fine. He also <laughs> asks, it's, reluctantly um, producer or reluctantly? It's the story itself that ha that's the issue. Not or, the, uh, reluctantly producer or reluctantly Ben Sanders? <laughs> reluctantly Ben Sanders, I think. <laughs> He's very depressed. Colonel Slander. We don't so tease him about that doing. anymore. After the you know what's hilarious? Jim Hall called for me the other day and asked for Colonel Sanders, and John went, Who? <laughs> <laughs> H H Colonel, Colonel, what? And then he was realized. Oh, Ben. It's ben. <laughs> oh, he should. It's good thing he didn't call him Colonel Slanders. Just... Exactly. Yeah. Why don't we right. put Eric's story we last? Better just wait for him because we're going to get to him soon, Ben. All his stories last. Well, who knows how soon he'll be Eric, off the phone? We're going to go ahead and have you hang up now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks. We'd appreciate it. Hang up the red phone. Yeah. <laughs> Did the Prime Minister give you a call bombing <laughs> Afghanistan or something? We need a Prime Minister in the U.S., don't we? We do. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> we we need some sort of, uh, what is it? Functional called? government. Yeah, one of, the, one of those uh, no figureheads that has no power to send the Vice President. A king! Yeah, something like that. Oh, dear. Uh, maybe a President and then a Prime Minister. Okay, like the other thanks, okay bye. Bye. Ben! He's back! Eric, thank you for keeping that brief. We do appreciate it. 
Ben left his post. We were ready to go. We're wasting precious seconds. I needed water. <coughs> All right. So, you ready, Ben? Yep. All right. All right. Someone's clapping or something. Sorry. Stomping. Michelle is hitting her <laughs> cheese stick on the desk, I think. There's My pencil. Oh, She's I thought it was a cheese saying, stick. saying, how dare you let it work interfere with roundabout. Or how dare you. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't at Eric, but uh, you feel like it might be you. All is right. someone hammering? Michelle what is the deal? Michelle is hitting a pencil right there. All right, stop it, please. All right, let's go, guys. <laughs> let's get started, shall we? Let's. Eric, Sorry, my phone's ringing. I hate you, Michelle. <laughs> Mark it, Ben. You're that's so Mark. How about that? The, that could be the title. Are you right I hate you, Michelle. Monday. You too, huh? All right. Hey, you and Gary in town at the same time. <laughs> All right. Pretend this is a library until it's your turn to talk. All right. Let's get started, shall we? Eric, I believe you have the first story in the rundown. Why don't you start us off? Smash that bottle of champagne on the prow of Roundabout. Well, Jeep has been teasing the idea of having a new pickup truck for several years now, the Gladiator concept uh, still being very drool-worthy. And yet, even though there seems to be quite a number of hand raisers for the truck, the higher-ups still won't sign off on production. So until Sergio or someone else at Jeep can get Sergio to sign off on the Gladiator, uh, of which they'd probably sell a couple hundred thousand worldwide, we we get the JK8 kit uh, for the four-door Wrangler. It's, this is a $5,500 kit from Mopar that turns your Wrangler into something resembling the old Scrambler from the late 70s and early 80s. Depending on how this kit sells, it may or may not have an effect on seeing the Gladiator come into production. Fascinating. Was that was the Gladiator the four-wheel drive one that could literally go in a circle? Is that what it was? No, that's the Kaiser one you're thinking of. No. This is the, the one Kaiser. that Wilhelm. This is the uh, small Jeep, but it has the um, small suicide doors in the back, mm. so it's not really a four-seater. It's really a bended cab two-seater. I see. Very nice, Michelle. I believe you are up next. I, I do, and I am not stuttering when I say from the Toy Toyota site, let's grow your car more. Why did the page just move? <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's grow your car more and more by enjoying the actual car ride. This is um, from the Toyota division named Toy Toyota. Get it? Because ho, 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 Honda doesn't have the same ring. <laughs> they have. <laughs> They released an iPhone app on iTunes called Backseat Driver. That's right. What every parent wants is a backseat driver armed with an attitude, a Twitter account, and an iPhone. In the game, my car follows Papa Car because only daddies drive using GPS data. After points have been collected, my car can be customized and the design and trip data sent to Twitter. Yet another reason why every child should be given a Twitter account at birth. That should be their, are you saying that should be their social security number then? Right. Exactly. <laughs> okay, just check. So just what the world needs, another crossover. In case there weren't enough, already enough car-based utilities on the market today, Ford is rumored to be developing another one. Auto Express reports the company has a 4x4 Fiesta in the works, and please stop highlighting my text, and claims it'll be ready to drop at next year's Geneva Motor Show. <laughs> Michelle, I know it's you. Allegedly, it's not me! I'm going to blame you. It's my hands are in the air. Cylon. <laughs> Can I finish? Can I finish? Allegedly, the vehicle will compete with the Nissan Juke, but knowing Ford, it won't be nearly as ugly. Look for three and four cylinder engines under the hood and a base price of about 16,000 pounds sterling, or in real money, about $26,000. <laughs> That's but, mean. Yes. But you know what they say? Consider the source. I don't necessarily trust this Auto Express. Sounds like Planet Express or something. Good news, everyone. <laughs> Colin, you're next. Well, ever wondered what a 40-foot-long accordion looks like? Well, those crazy Germans have answered this very important question for us by slamming a Class 6 truck traveling at 43 miles per hour into two stationary vehicles, according to Autoblog.com. Germany's equivalent of the AAA, the ADAC, conducted this test to raise awareness for emergency brake assist systems for large trucks, making them mandatory in the nation. The result of this test is a delicious puree of metals, rubbers, plastics, and glass assortment, assortments. As the Germans would say, bon appetit. Where, what? So this is a, 
<laughs> it's Sam. <laughs> Bona Clearly, he's a man of the world, Michelle. <laughs> it says Bona Boutique. It's like Bone Bone Bona Boutique or something like that. <laughs> I spelled it phonetically. <laughs> no one would have known that until you. <laughs> Gun covered his grammar and spelling. <laughs> I'm not a French man, Michelle. If you have <laughs> But would the Germans say something in the French? Germans, the Germans would say bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's Maybe and there you, there's our title right there. <laughs> bon exactly. Bon appetit exactly. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm not even going to ask any. So this is a video I take, Colin? Yeah, it's a video, and, you know, I mean, the, it's a fairly ridiculous safety thing. Like, how do you not, how would we not know? I mean, obviously, if, if, uh, you know, a large truck traveling at 50 miles per hour, you know, in, into two um, wafer-thin small cars, what do you expect? But no one would survive, basically. Yeah, we are Germans. We must be thorough. <laughs> yeah. Gorski C. in the chat says, in fairness... The Germans who invaded France and occupied Paris would have said bon appetit. So Autobird is historically accurate. Phonetically <laughs> wrong. But phonetically wrong. <laughs> so there you go. So it's a video. Where can people check this out, Colin? Uh, at autoblog.com. No, they can't. Roundaboutshow.com. No. Roundaboutshow.com. <laughs> Roundaboutshow.com. Apply directly to the forum. <laughs> Wait, that's the wrong thing. The ears, but <laughs> cut his mic. I told you it's been a while. Sorry. <laughs> Eric, you're on base now. What's up? <clears throat> well, you'd think Yogi Berra was running Saab these days because it's deja vu all over again. Saab, who have had money problems since they started building cars, in fact, have they ever turned a profit, have once again had to shut down their production. This time, they didn't have enough money to pay their workers, and naturally, the workers weren't going to show up if they weren't going to get paid. Uh, it's time for Saab to go away. Ever since GM said they were going to put Saab out of its misery, there's been an outcry from people uh, for it not to happen. And yet, zero, zip, zilch, nada of those people who whine about Saab's demise have put their money down to buy one. So what do you expect to happen when no one buys your product? Hmm. It's the official car of the Dodgers. Of the what? Dodgers. Oh, what? Yeah, so what well, that, 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 uh, that explains the whole um, Frank uh, McCourt, McCourt situation in a nutshell. So do, right. what, I mean, does anyone want to make bets on when this company's finally going to you know, cook it? Huh? I bet it'd be tasty. It'd be Bona Boutique. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be Boutique Bona. So, Eric, you owned a Saab. You don't no longer own a Saab. Yes. Why? You Great car. Mm -hmm. Just not enough of them to sell. Mm -hmm. Michelle, you're a Saab Saabophile, aren't you? Um, I I liked them when I was a kid. Like the, t you know, like the college kids that had them, mm. I thought that was the coolest thing. Uh, anything from Sweden back then must have been cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love Sweden. I'd rather have a spiker. There you go. Eric would, it would agree with you on that one, I think. Anyway, Jimmy Stewart, he's everyone's favorite dead celebrity, and gosh almighty, why shouldn't he be? He's just such a nice fella, and so American, too. Well, the fine folks at TBD.com posted an instructional video of sorts starring none other than Mr. Smith, but this time he wasn't going to Washington. This 11-minute classic was released in 1954 and produced by Chevrolet. Entitled Tomorrow's Drivers, it chronicles the advanced driver's education program in Phoenix, Arizona at the time, which started young people off so early they learned about safe motoring when they were in kindergarten. It's hard to imagine anything even close to this existing today, given the entire country's budgetary situation, but ah, it sure is nice to look back and reminisce. And one thing's for sure, old Jimmy didn't appreciate any monkey shines. Ah, there goes Mr. Speed King himself, passing on a curve. Okay, what's the matter, lady? Your arm broken? It will be when I throw you down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Ben, you'll edit that in. The, correct. Yeah, yeah. Mark. Of course he will. <laughs> well, there you go. So check out the whole video clip at roundaboutshow.com. It's pretty entertaining, starring Mr. Stewart. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Anyway, 
YSBSWF, according to our friends at Cars Coop, young ladies in swimsuits holding a car wash at a university to raise money for their sorority is as American as Vladimir Putin. In a patriotic t effort to get P Putin put back into the Kremlin, Putin's army, this team of young, smart beauties, um, held a car wash at the Moscow State University to the delight of the drivers of Russian-made cars like Ladas and Volgas. This politically mo motivated antic was preceded by the young, smart beauties tearing up their shirts in support of Putin. None of you just listened to a word I read because you are all watching the video. <laughs> well, Colin, I've got to ask you. Um, you know a lot about boring things. Is Putin that... <laughs> <laughs> is, is, Go on. <laughs> is Putin that popular still? He used to be president. Now he's what, prime minister? Oh, Putin? Yeah. I mean, he's contemplating to run for president again. He says, Medev how do you say, Medvedev is, uh, is not, uh, yeah. isn't uh, proven his, his weight. And, uh, and you know, he's clearly set it all up so he can run again. Yeah. And I guess the country, I, I think the country likes him enough, you know. He, he was limited by the Constitution to two terms, and so he had his puppet Medvedev put in. And now that it's, his Medvedev is constitutionally limited by two terms, Putin's going to move back in. Yeah. I got, you got to respect the fact that he at least obeys the Constitution. That he, Two consecutive terms, though, in, but as in, many of those... Unlike, uh, what's, what's his name, uh, Chavez. Bolivarian Revolution. Yeah. Very nice. What's going on in Japan, Colin? Well, you know, as we, as we all know, Japan's had a tough go of it as late. You know, it's got calcified corporations, a state political structure, and, well, the ground itself has been shaken to its core this year, so to speak. Uh, now it seems the downtrodden nation is spiraling into a civil war, if the latest car-on-car -car carnage coming from Toyota and Honda is any indication. According to Jalopnik, a camouflaged 2012 Honda CRV mule was T-boned by a last-generation Toyota Highlander. A Lexus RX was also involved in this accident, apparently, making this a trifecta of Japanese self-flagellation. <laughs> I'd like... <laughs> Oddly, despite the accident, the bystander taking the post-accident shots still couldn't get a clear shot of the CRV's refreshed front and rear fascia. I guess we'll have to wait till this fall to see what those updates will bring. I wouldn't be sitting on the edge of your seat for those updates, given Honda's recent design. <laughs> or, yeah, or better, yeah, we can just go around and try to run, run you know, T-Bo in another one. <laughs> rip off this time. What exactly was left to see of it as it was crashed? I mean... <laughs> well, the front... The, the front camouflage facial clip it was still on there perfectly it almost seems like it was kind of set up you know what i mean yeah because mm. yeah, the guy the, the um Jalop, jalopnik has a link to the, the 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 blog of the guy i guess who got in the accident and he didn't get any shots of the interior or anything it was it's very strange yeah hey eric do you have a, oh, a clock near you do you know what time it is yes <laughs> <laughs> What time would it be? You know what time it is? I would if you, if you don't mind. It's ten minutes after eight. Okay. Oh. Or are you gonna say it's time for? You? <laughs> yeah. Peanut yeah. butter yeah. jelly time. <laughs> time for another beer. Wow. Zach Bowman's not on. So. <laughs> what do we got here, Eric? Well, speaking of Jalopnik, you can blame Jalopnik's editor Ray Work for a lot of things. Taking automotive blogging to a level that makes TMZ ready to win Pulitzer Prizes, uh, challenging its readers and writers to have posts that are little more than either link paid or links to other sites controlled by Gawker Media. Uh, the latest meme is one they've rolled out about a year ago, and that's hacking into construction road signs and changing the messages. They have provided step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it, and they've even encouraged their minions to post pictures of their air quotes, accomplishments. The latest effort takes everyone back to 1992, where this effort reads, Stop! Hammer time. Does it come with parachute pants? Because otherwise I'm not interested. <laughs> so yes, they, they hacked the road sign, so instead of lane ends, move over, it said hammer time. No, at first it said stop. Yes. And then hammer it flashed time. the second sign, and then it said hammer time. <laughs> there... Those hackers, they if they're anything, it's creative. A real rascals. Uh, rapscallion. Craig will be out doing that tonight in Armada or wherever the hell he lives. They don't have electricity out there for road signs. Come on. <laughs> you don't need me to tell you there are droves of imbeciles, morons, idiots, and just plain a-holes out on the world's roads. They can, at the drop of a hat and completely unprovoked, cause untold pandemonium on highways and side streets alike. The consequences of their mental deficiency can be infuriating at best and deadly at worst. 
Fortunately, we can laugh at their poor decisions, which is what we have today. Autoblog's got a video clip of a BMW driver, of course, that just couldn't wait his and or her non-gender specific turn. The driver in question tries to sque tried to squeeze between two cars on the highway with predictably devastating results. A multi-car accident. Yep. Lane splitting. There's a reason it's for motorcycles. Again, roundaboutshow.com for all of the gory and or juicy details. Michelle. Yes. Fight. Ding, ding. <laughs> I like the title of that last story. You, you, it reads to me, BMW tries to squeeze through Craig. <laughs> yeah. oh. oh, that's nice. Hmm. Not, not a nice image. Do, do, no, do. All not. the bones and gristle, I know. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> so brittle. I know. It's, oh, I'm modeled after paper mache and or porcelain. <laughs> Michelle, what is going on with aluminum well, sculptures? <clears throat> Timothy and Zana, a motion artist, I'm not sure, <clears throat> I think Jalopnik <clears throat> thinks that's real, um, has created an 18-layer metal tribute to a Porsche 911 out of countless numbers of bolts and colored sheet metal. Using Photoshop to break down the image into layers took the longest time, and Enzana developed an algorithm to assemble the laser-cut metal pieces after he'd painted them. In the words of the great Jeffrey Ross, it looks very nice. Enzana was an art student <laughs> for three years at UC Santa Barbara, but dropped out because he was too busy with other art projects, and I think his parents are just really proud he finally finished something. Were you making air quotes art projects like medical marijuana? Is that what you're suggesting? Oh, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> How you feel, girl? <laughs> well, it's a it's a clever idea, isn't it? You don't like it, Michelle? It is, it is cool looking. I think it's really cool. I mean, it does look like a nice piece of animation, right? You had a bit of facetiousness in your voice. Oh, it looks very nice. I don't know what else to say about it. It looks very nice. <laughs> it's pretty, gosh almighty. It's not as pretty as you. I want to see an A6 in, in that. <laughs> <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Mr. Bird, spread oh, your wings and fly like the eagle. I love this story. So red light cameras were supposed to be a, a treasure trove for cash strap municipalities, uh, but not so apparently for Los Angeles, which is canceling its red light camera program. According to kickingtires.com, hmm. the city has agreed to stop issuing citations by the end of July because the program was actually costing the city more revenue than it brought in. Fines issued by the camera system hold little consequence. Paying the tickets is merely voluntary. <laughs> so that resulted in a 60% delinquency rate. Critics say the red light cameras do little to promote safety, so they're typically used to catch right turn violations, which are considered to be safer and easier to complete. So um, hold yeah. on, hold on. Voluntary? Yeah, that's uh, the people say that they argue that about Chicago's one too. It's a hundred dollar ticket, but you you know it's it's not a moving violation because they can't issue a ticket to a driver because they don't know who's driving the car. They issue it to the property, yeah, and thus the car cannot commit a moving violation. So well, how so? Forty percent of people are dumb enough to pay it. If they don't have to. <laughs> well, I think in Chicago they break your legs if you don't. So oh. <laughs> maybe maybe they're just nicer and throw you off the L train or something. Yeah. 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 Michelle, are you guys jumping for joy out there in SoCal? Um, I guess. We didn't have very many in Long Beach, so it never really affected me um, so much because, you know me, 10 and 2. Well, you but, but obey the law, too. <laughs> so. well, Craig makes fun of me for holding my steering wheel that way. Jesus. It's how I drive. It's how I drive my GA. It's <laughs> like lobster claws. I make sure the, the, the seat is as low as possible so I look like a little old grandma trying to peer over the steering wheel. Yep. And you found this article on Kicking Tires, Colin. <laughs> well, actually... Um, actually, Ben, I, I, ben found it. Yeah, because I just randomly put my name next to it. <laughs> oh, it's really from the LA Times. Ah, but, so uh, you we, scraped we, it from we, there and posted it. I see. Well, very good, everyone. Good hustle team. Good hustle team. That concludes the news portion of the show, and after the break, we are going to get to a great interview. So coming up... Hold on to your butts. Coming up, we will continue our discussion with Eric Tritko of RumbleStrip.net, Colin Bird from Cars.com, and Miss Shelly Naranjo of Autobytel Plus. We will chat with a guy, a gentleman, that's driving a 1930 Ford Model A for an entire year as his only car. Find out what that's like right after this. But now, right now... I need to thank our fine friends at Advance Auto Parts. If you visit our website, roundaboutshow.com, right now and click on the Advance Auto Parts link on the right-hand sidebar of the page, you can save some major money. Some big... Buy stuff now! I couldn't have said it any better myself, Eric. That's probably why Ben has it recorded. 
Buy stuff now! Yes. There is a very special, very exclusive affiliate offer available. If you spend $10 at Advance Auto Parts, you can save, pardon me, if you say, spend $30 at Advance, you can save up to 10. You hit 50 bucks, you can save $20. You spend $100, take $30 off that bill. Once again, that's 10 off 30, 20 off 50, and 30 off 100. And that's a bargain. It's a lot of savings, Craig. So, to take advantage of this offer, as I mentioned, it is exclusively available through our website, roundaboutshow.com. Again, you just follow the link. It's in the right-hand sidebar of the page. You place your order, and the rest is history. The money stays right in your wallet. Now, if you spend $75 or more, you get free shipping. So that's a pretty darn good deal. You buy a box of stuff that's pretty heavy, wheel bearings, whatever else. It adds up. You hit 75 bucks, free. You name the location, they'll send it there. So that's a pretty good deal. Of course, you can always pick it up in store as well. If there's one just a block away, you can walk down. You can arrange to have that as well. They're more than happy to help you out. So again, that's Advanced Auto Parts. We thank them for, the, for their support of Roundabout Show. And if... Um, even if you're not in the market for auto parts or anything like that, you can still click on the link, follow the link, and show them that you uh, support us and you support them. So we would very much appreciate that. Advance Auto Parts. Go team! <gasps> By the way, whoever, hey, whoever's typing, I could hear that the whole time. <coughs> hey, Craigie. Yes. Not, not that you care. <laughs> Michelle. Yes? Michelle? Yes, Craig. Or what? Michelle. My name's not Craig. If you <laughs> click on the Advanced Auto Parts link in the roundaboutshow.com, yes. and you're in the chat room, it takes you out of the chat room. Oh, it doesn't open a new tab? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I see what you did. And then I was having trouble getting back. <laughs> do, do, do. Well, we thank you for your support, Michelle. We're glad you're stepping I up. I clicked. Helping us. <laughs> I just yeah. never clicked during the show. So. <laughs> I guess Ben will have to fix that. Do, do, do. See, I'm gonna, I just did it. I did it again. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right. So did we have what we needed as a standalone module, Ben, you think, for the second half? I think so. Well, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, yes, okay. I do think so. This is the thumbs up sign. Cause Did you ever welcome Colin on the show? Because Eric got a call and then... Colin, did he welcome you? Did he say, hey, Colin, thanks for being here? He said he, he included me in the with the regulars. That's fine. Yeah, I did. Oh, he did. Okay. You've been promoted, Colin. All right? <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you didn't get typhoid. It's better than that. Okie dokie. So and we're taking a break. What happened? What's happening? Uh, we are. Carmen's here. Oh, Carmen's here. Uh, we have to do the close of the show, and then Carmen's we... there. Bring her in. That's just. <laughs> uh, we're almost done. We're basically done. We've got ten more minutes. Okay. Okay. What is left? Plugs. All right. And with that, I think we have a show, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Colin Bird, cars.com. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> is it like a box yes. of donuts? Mm. <laughs> Pastries, yeah. deep fried. Am I supposed Blade. to say this plug here? Or is this what? What, what are you working on? That's the question uh, I always ask. Oh. Um. Well, the, the most recent thing, I was out of the office for a while, but we did a field trial of one of those mobile EV quick uh, charging stations. I believe the AAA said that they were going to acquire some of them. Um, this, I don't think, was from them. This is from a company called Real, Real Power, um, which I believe is in Indiana. So we just tested out the Level 3 charger, which I believe this was actually the first time we actually were able to test that out on the Nissan Leaf. And... Uh, and the level two, and just to see what that would uh, entail if you ever ran out of energy on your electric car. So that's on uh, kickingtires.com. So how did it work? Without it, uh, spilling the the bacon or whatever. You know, it worked well. I mean, that was uh, that was the first time that we uh, tried a level 
3, and uh, basically they put a level 3 charger on a flatbed truck. They say they're going to incorporate the design better, and I believe uh, whoever AAA is getting, I think they're going to get the same company, um, Japanese company that's doing it in, in, in for them in, in that nation. And uh, uh, let me see, I can't remember the exact times, but basically it, could ch it charged it. So we had, um, it, we charged it for 10 minutes, and I think we were able to, we got 11 miles in 10 minutes. Hmm. So that's yeah, not too so, shabby. Yeah, not and too shabby. And how many grams of diesel particulate emissions? Uh, <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. No. <laughs> but that's great, Colin. Thanks for coming on in short notice. We didn't get an invite out to you until the night before, but you made you're it. Like, oh, hey, didn't we tell you you were going to be on the show? <laughs> Here's the rundown. Do your thing. Yeah. Thank you for being a friend. There you go. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks again for inviting me. And uh, yeah. always a good time, Michelle Naranjo. Miss Whee! Motormouth. Also, you are also doing a couple other things. You work for a website called Auto by Tell, I understand. I, I sure do. And I, I think I, you've, you've been a bit of a shutterbug of late, no? I, I have. I, <clears throat> on, on, I commute with my boss. We carpool. And um, the other day we pulled onto the 405 from Long Beach, and there's a Mercedes-Benz facility that sort of hides at the corner of Long Beach up by my house that's an environmental testing facility, and there was a caravan of um, camouflaged Mercedes trolling down the 405 during rush hour, mind you. So they were pretty well hidden, you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. And it, it, and it was, you know, it, they were just right there, just this entire line of them. It was pretty cool. And so it was funny because I went over to Auto Pacific the other day for a meeting, and that first, that one profile picture um, is apparently the B segment that's not been named yet, and it, they told me it was a better picture than even Brenda Pretty had sent them. Ow, ow. Ow, ow, and that was done with a black blurry, I'll have you know. Black blurry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Take that, Canon. So, yeah, where can people find your, your spy work, Michelle? My spy work is, is going to be found linked from the roundaboutshow.com show notes. Very nice. And you also have another little pet project on the side. I do. It's the um, open line show is our monthly show is on um, this coming Tuesday, August 2nd at 8 p.m. And this week I will be doing it live from the Auto Line Studios. We'll live? Do it live. Wait, you mean live yes. like here? I'm yes. coming like in the physical. studio. You hear that, listeners? Are you in the Detroit area? We're going to do a meetup. Yes. So don't come piling into the studio. <laughs> no. Yeah, we're going to do a meetup before, like about 4 30 or 5 o'clock. We we venue flight. yet to be determined, but if it's up to pay Michelle, attention to me until the day before. Pay attention to <laughs> Miss Motormouth on Twitter and uh, on Facebook probably too, and I'm sure Roundabout will be happy to tweet that out Blige. as well. Yes. Yes. So. Michelle, always a pleasure. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, Craggy. Thank you, ever so kind. Eric Tritko, hey. RumbleStrip.net. Yep. RumbleStrip on Twitter. Yes. <laughs> I'm on the Google Pluses too, but I, it just is me. Circle me. It's the social. I understand. Yeah, circle me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you seen along those URLs? Circle are? gets the square. Right. <laughs> so what's going on in your world? Social um, media maven, Eric Tritko. I just posted on Wednesday, finally, my review of the Buick Regal Turbo. And I am working on my reviews of the Lexus CT200H and the Kia Optima. Very nice. So Love all that kinds. Lexus. Sorry. <laughs> speak, Colin. Speak. No, I said, "Love that Lexus." You better write a positive review, or else. You love the Lexus. Love the Lexus. Why? It was, <laughs> it was um, transportation, all right. If if I had anything, it, it got it, me it from there get, to here, and that's all. I actually, I actually got better highway mileage in the in the Lexus than I did in the Prius. So. Um, but I'll, I'll just say that uh, the Vatican, the bureaucracy of the Vatican moves with uh, more swiftness and more uh, <laughs> vigor than, than the CT200H does. It does, yeah, it kind of drones on if you ever let the, uh, the engine kick in there too much. Yeah, luxury hybrid, not so much. But Eric, thank you for joining us, as thank you. always. And last but not least, Benjamin Sanders, getting all the technical stuff done. Trying oh, to. Always helpful. But mostly a lot of this. <laughs> Nobody died. <laughs> what are you talking about? What? Oh, 
like how it like crackled in there. <laughs> Colin has even, even the fail failed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, good hustle, Ben. Thanks. Yep. Thanks. So hey, listen. Thanks, listeners, Ben. I'll... Yeah. Yeah. Don't miss yeah. your chance, Colin. Yeah. 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 Ben, I yeah whatever. Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Butter boutique. <laughs> That's how I spell things phonetically. It's French. <laughs> Don't miss your chance to win one hundred dollars by listening to Roundabout on your smartphone using a cool little app called Stitcher. Just go to stitcher.com/roundabout. Then, when you register your Stitcher account, don't forget to enter the promo code Roundabout. One of our lucky listeners will win one hundred dollars each month. So, I'm going to be doing that. You should, too. Remember, you can watch Roundabout Live every Friday evening starting at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time or 3.30 out on the West Coast with Michelle. And don't forget to check out the rest of the Autoline family of fine programs, including Autoline Detroit, Autoline After Hours, and, of course, Autoline Daily. And if, uh, if you've got any questions or comments for us, we would love to hear from you. Drop us a line on our Google Voice number, the ROAB hotline. That's one five five nine roab 411 That's one five five nine seven six two. 2411. Again, we'd love to hear from you. We are on Twitter. Just go to twitter.com slash roundaboutshow. And of course, Facebook as well. Just as easy to find. Facebook.com slash roundaboutshow. And if you never want to miss an action packed episode, and frankly, who doesn't? You can subscribe on either iTunes or the Zoom Marketplace. And with that, thanks to all of you out there listening. Please join us again next week as we circle the roundabout. We'll talk to you then. I didn't have a sound effect ready. I always and if anyone effect. needs a free Stitcher account, just hit me up on Twitter. A free Stitcher? They're all free. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're saying. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't well, yeah, stitcher. but you got to get the invite. Or still won't, or unless they're handing out invites left St- and right again now. Stitcher? So. Or Google or not Play? Stitcher. I'm sorry, not Stitcher. Um, <laughs> oh, Spotify. Sorry. Oh, Spotify. Spotify. Yes. You know, yeah. like, We're not like, on Spotify yet. I like because... Mog. Uh, do, you, do you? What's the difference? Do you ever use Mog or Rhapsody? Is it really I that different? I haven't used Mog, no. Um, okay. So I don't know, but I mean, I, I like it. Be, I like it in some ways because they be, they pretty much have just about everything. So you, if you want to listen to an album or a, a song, and you're like, well, do I need to buy it? You can listen for free. Um, and then the the other cool thing is is it it's hooking up through people through their or like your friends on Facebook. Um, you can hook that up, so then you can they can set up playlists, and you can kind of listen to what some of your other friends are playing, which is cool because I've actually found some. Some pretty cool music to to listen to that way. Yeah, I might switch. I mean, I uh, I, I don't know. Are you done it's with free. iTunes? I'm, no, I'm using Mog, and uh, it's you know from what they described for the 4.99 version of Spotify, it seems the same. So I don't I don't know. Yeah. So Good job, everyone. Chat, Excuse me. I, I sent you a link, Colin. Yeah, I can't find it. I don't know how this how to make this thing work. It doesn't oh, here click? we go. Show earlier messages. Damn it. Yeah, how do I... How do, oh, here we go. Oh, I forgot to thank our chatters. Oh. Pulled up, Ben? Yeah. Oh, nice. I couldn't see you. Who have we got joining us? Who's, who's here it's for the really long It's really beautiful. Haul? Let's see. We have dad underscore. I wonder how much... Uh, He's here, a I'm going to send you my... Uh... Guest 14613. Thank you That's for your my, time. We my do album of cars. It. Jonathan Brown, as always. Great to have you back. Mira Dart. From the frozen wastelands of, was it Saskatchewan? Manitoba? I don't know. Saskatchewan. <laughs> they grow a lot of wheat up there, I, I guess. Miss Motormouth, of course. Mud, Mon- Mud Monster made it back. We have not seen him in quite a spell. Mud Monster, how you doing? Mud Monster, I still owe you my comments about the G8, by the way. I know I was supposed to do that months ago. Months ago. And then I promised July 4th. And now I'm going to promise. You by Labor Day. Well, I won't set a date. Labor Day. Everybody lets Mud Monster down. Uh, mostly me. That's okay. No, it's okay. I, leave, I let him down too. Ben has broad shoulders. No. <laughs> what are you saying? Sean Husky? In Erie. Thank you. You were at the very beginning. That's dedication. And it looks like Gorski C bowed out early, but that is responsible. And Burn. that is all. He was Thank you, everyone. Top. Top. Oh, is he? I'm sorry, Gorski. I miss the at sign. It makes it stand out. Gorski, I'm sorry. Thank you so much for sticking around. We appreciate it. Awesome. All right. Goodbye, all. Have a great weekend. Toodaloo. And week. Yes, because we'll be back next week.
That's a threat.